So how do you do it? That's one of the most common questions I get asked by folks who watch my YouTube channel. See, I've covered quite a range of equipment in these videos. Things like the Pioneer laser display, Technics amplifiers, old 50s radios, mixing desks, you name it. I've touched them all. And people always wonder how I'm able to get in there and repair these different types of technology. Well, I'm going to tell you my biggest secret, and it's really quite simple. And if you've been attentive and sharp-eyed whilst watching my videos, you'd have noticed something. That no matter how different the technologies are, the underlying process is always the same. In other words, the three fundamental steps I took to repair the AWA tape deck were the same as the steps I took to repair the Technics SU 3500 amplifier, which were the same as the 1977 Pioneer SX550, which were the same as any other technology I've repaired. And in this video, I'll be revealing exactly what those three steps are. And they're really simple. So even the complete newbies amongst you will be able to take a piece of vintage technology and repair it just like I do. So now when something breaks down, there's no need to call the repairman, splash the cash on expensive repairs. You can fix it yourself and save quite a bit of money. I personally charge about £200 per repair. Now if you're particularly entrepreneurial, you can not only save money, you could make money by repairing other people's things just like I do. And it's a very rare skill to come by in today's world. Nothing beats the satisfaction of repairing some old vintage equipment and I personally think this is the most fulfilling hobby of anything in the world. I really enjoy this stuff. But before we get ahead of ourselves, at the bottom of this lies the ability, the skills and the process to repair these technologies. So if you're interested in mastering the art of these vintage repairs, then hang around. I'm about to go through the three-step process to repairing them. This is truly the secret sauce that I've developed over the years. You see, when I first started fixing electronics, I'd do what most people do. I'd be tinkering randomly, hoping for the best, and I don't need to tell you, that wasn't very effective. I ended up changing parts that didn't need changing, and causing more problems than I fixed. I was guilty of diving in with a soldier iron before understanding what the problem was, let alone what caused it. And after tons of unnecessary revisits and re-repairs and just frustrating everyone involved, I decided to sit down and analyse the process make improvements. Then I realised something. See, most electronics looks quite complicated and daunting at first glance, but when you actually get into it, it all breaks down into little easy bite-sized chunks. It's all very modular. And the components perform the same functions in virtually every device, so they can be handled in the same way. And when I got fed up of reinventing the wheel for every repair, that's when I thought I needed a process that I could follow, no matter the technology. And that was the inception of the three steps we're about to go through. And when I started following them for myself, I was able to fix things a lot more quickly and cheaper than I had done ever before. So if you use this three step framework yourself, I'm confident it will change the game for you as much as it did for me. No more staring blankly at a faulty circuit board wondering where to begin. No more hours of frustration trying to fix a problem only for it to get worse. And no more buying parts that end up in the bin. The three step framework is very simple. Most people think that repairing electronics is a very complicated skill to acquire. That you need to be a genius with a master's degree in engineering, or a mechanical mindset, or be really good at maths. Or you need the steady hands of a surgeon to solder the tiny parts onto the circuit boards. Well I'm here to tell you it's not true. Anyone can pick up the art of repairing vintage electronics and get to a respectable level quite easily. You just need to be committed to the art and have a proven framework to guide you. And that's why I'm here. So without further ado, let's get into the first step you should undertake with any repair, and that is testing. Make sure you can replicate the fault consistently. Power it up, turn it on, try and operate it until you encounter the fault. Do this before you go anywhere near it with a screwdriver. This is a very important step, because if you haven't experienced a fault for yourself, how do you know you fixed it? Just imagine taking the lid off and poking around and then the fault's disappeared. Was it a loose connection, or should you keep digging? Do you just put the lid on and hope for the best? It's not a great position to be in. Skipping that step is like working blindfolded. You've got no way of knowing if you were successful. And you don't need any specialist equipment, just the stuff you'd need to operate it as normal. And if you're looking to do a lot of repairs, it's worth setting yourself up with a good workspace, with good lighting. And get yourself some things for convenience, like the commonly used cables, and build a dim bulb tester, and I would suggest getting an isolation transformer for a bit of added safety. And you're going to need a multimeter when you get deeper into the next stage. Step two is diagnostics. Now that you've witnessed the fault first hand, that'll often provide a clue as to where the fault lies. However, for that to work, you need to have a basic understanding of how the device works, like a block diagram. And you can often get this info online. Just search for the model number and the word service manual. You'll be surprised how often the info is out there already, and for free. But what if you can't find the manual? Well, that's not the end of it, but you have got a little bit more work to do. You have to make your own block diagram. A trained eye can see what's going on in the circuit just by looking at the components and their layout. 
You can follow PCB traces by eye from the input sockets to the circuits that process them. And you'll find out it's quite modular. That's because the designers would have designed it in a modular way and that just translates into how the circuit boards laid out. And you don't need to trace out every single component either, just the major ones. They're like landmarks. You don't need to be an electrical engineer or genius to read schematics. They're actually quite simple. They're just like roadmaps and before car GPS, everyone could read a roadmap, right? And once you're equipped with a block diagram and a map of the circuit boards, you're in a good place to start guessing where the fault might lie. If it's dead, start with the power supplies. If there's no output signal, just follow the input signal all the way through until it stops. At this point, you're going to closer detail and zoom into that part of the circuit. You're going to be looking at specific components now. Maybe something's short, maybe something's blown open. Whatever it is, the fault's going to be right in front of you. This process ensures you're heading in the right direction. And without it, you risk encountering frustration and you may end up quitting the repair altogether. Then after that we move on to the fun part which is step 3, the repair. And if you've done steps 1 and 2 correctly this is actually the easiest part of the job and potentially the quickest too. No more butchered circuit boards, no more wasted components and when you've done your repair just repeat step 1 and see if you got it right first time. And once you've applied these three steps you'll quickly realise something that repairing vintage tech really isn't that difficult. Part of the difficulty is people just don't know what to do. You open up your old equipment and you see all these wires and components everywhere. It looks really overwhelming. But now you know better. Now you know how easy it would be once you have a proven process to work from. And my hope is that you'll break through all these limiting beliefs that prevented you from trying this hobby for all these years. Beliefs like you're bad at maths or a slow learner or don't have an engineering degree. And I want you to know these excuses are just in your head and that you can experience a joy and fulfilment of repairing your own vintage tech, regardless of your circumstances. See, I started my professional life as a trained industrial engineer repairing robotics and automated CNC machine tools. I really enjoyed the job, but my career progressed and took me further and further away from the electronics that I enjoyed. Then in 2012, I discovered Dave Jones' EEV blog channel. Now, there's a guy who enjoys electronics as much as I do, and he's happy to showcase it to the world. And that lit the spark that got me back into electronics. Then a year later, I put a little website up called Personal Electronics, where I offered my services to the local village. It's quite successful and I built up quite a good customer base. And then Covid struck and my repair business boomed. That's because it was just me in a shed at the bottom of the garden. I was able to carry on. It went really well. Little did I know my life was about to take a strange turn. I was invited to audition as an electronics expert on a Channel 4 restoration series called Mend It For Money and I got the part. I travelled to Glasgow and stayed there six weeks while I filmed my restoration of a jukebox and a radiogram. It was a blast. The 20 episode series aired throughout February 2021 and I got my first little taste of fame. And I remember my phone going mad. I had messages from everybody, friends, well-wishers, family. My phone just went crazy. In fact, the battery went flat that evening. However, after a few weeks, it all died down and no one was interested. But the spark had been lit. My partner Jane and some of my customers convinced me to start filming my own repair videos and upload them on YouTube. So I went and got a little Sony video camera and started filming my videos and I edited them on some free software and uploaded them onto my new channel which I called Mend It Mark and I set out to show the repairs in the most entertaining way. People loved it off the bat, I got some really nice comments straight away. Things like brilliant and entertaining and excellent diagnostic skills. Mark is stunning in his abilities to repair electronics, outstanding. But there's a problem. Whilst the video provides an enjoyable watch time and maybe we'll pick up a little bit of electronics watching it, I'm not able to stop and explain why something is the way it is, otherwise the videos will be 3 hours rather than 40 minutes. And I'm not able to answer your questions live or discuss your technology with you, or the little things that make electronics more understandable. And after running our live workshop a few weeks ago, we had a lot of feedback and I realised some of you aren't watching just for enjoyment. Some of you are here for building your own skills so you can do what I do and bring vintage equipment back to life for yourself. That's why I've decided to open up a new platform where you can really immerse yourself in this lost art. And it's called Mend It Like Mark. This is my online community and workshop programme where I teach people the three-step process in more detail. What's providing students the place to connect and learn together? My goal is to have you master repairing vintage tech so you can experience the rewards this art can bring. Whether it's the fulfilment of repairing some old electronics you've got lying around, or earn a bit of money by fixing other people's stuff, or maybe just do it for the sheer fun of it. My programme gives you everything you need to get started. And here's what's included. First is the How to Master the Art of Vintage Repairs video course. This is the core of the programme where I'll go through the six modules to tell you everything you need to know to confidently test, diagnose and repair vintage electronic equipment. You'll discover my three-step process for tackling any vintage repair job. 
how to set up your workshop even on a budget, the right mindset you'll need to develop to become experts at repairing vintage tech and so much more. Every month I'll host an online session where I'll explore a range of niche topics and ideas in the electronics engineering space, ensuring your skills are always up to date. And if you can't make the sessions, don't worry, the recordings will be made available to you so you can re-watch them at your leisure. You'll also get sneak peeks of my upcoming YouTube videos and you can even send your stuff in to feature in the next videos. The best part of the Mend It Like Mark programme is the exclusive community. Here you'll be able to connect, discuss and swap stories with fellow electronics enthusiasts just like yourselves. I'll even be doing a weekly Q&A session where you can ask me anything about electronics. As you can see I hold nothing back in Mend It Like Mark. There's a bunch of stuff I've not even mentioned like the in-depth breakdowns of the repairs I post on YouTube. So that you can see the why behind every how because I brush over a lot of things on the YouTube videos to keep them shorter. You'll also gain access to my custom schematics and repairs so you can build your own gadgets and avoid buying really expensive test equipment. <laughs> I want to make sure you have every resource available to turn yourself into a pro at repairs. Imagine in a few weeks you'll be confidently repairing that old radio you've got stashed away, really in the good old days. Or you could offer your repair service at maybe £200 a job and you all know it's never just one repair. Or you could simply impress your friends and family with your newfound skill. Or with the education and community at Mend It Like Mark. And it won't cost you a university degree, which are thousands of pounds by the way. And nor will it cost you what a repairman would charge for a couple of repairs. As I said, I charge £200 each. We've already had our first round of early adopters join from when I opened the doors up to the attendees of the live workshop series that I ran recently. But if you're finding out about Mend It Like Mark only now, you're still really early. I haven't spoken about it before in any of my other videos. And that's why, whilst I'm still building it, you can get full access to Mend It Like Mark. Not for the full price of £397, but a discounted entry of £247, which is nearly 40% off. This discount is for those of you who know you want to master the art of electronic repair and want to save a few quid by investing into yourself early. We've already built up a fantastic tight-knit group of members inside and I'm really excited to be building it up. Honestly, I think there might even be interest from the academic world further down the line. I mean, where else can you find an education on this topic? So I've got a big vision for Mendic Like Mark and I'm extending you guys an opportunity to join us now in the early stages. You know how startups offer their products for early bird access right at the very start? Well, what we're doing with our near 40% discount is something akin to that. I don't know how long we'll have this discount running for because I might need to take it down at any moment depending on how things shape up. So if you're committed to mastering electronics, joining our family and building a profitable new hobby, then I'd encourage you to make use of this opportunity and join us now, which you can do by clicking on the link in the comments and descriptions below. From there, you can simply click through to our secure checkout page and you'll see the instructions for how to join our platform. I can't wait to meet you inside. We'll meet either in the community or on one of the live calls. And you'll be well on the way to experience the joy of tackling any repair job with confidence. And on the off chance you're still watching this but there's something holding you back, I totally understand and that's why we have a refund policy. Simply let me know within 14 days of purchase and I'll refund your money, no questions asked. So with that said, if you think now isn't the right time to join, that's no problem. I will see you on the next YouTube video. If you do decide to join, that's absolutely great. All you need to do is click on the link in the description and the comments below and I'll see you inside.